And welcome to Conversations with Ajusta Tu Corona. I am Lillian, your notary, your tax preparer, owner of several businesses, Maldonado Consulting, and Exceptional Me Jewelry. I am the founder and co-host of Ajusta Tu Corona. And these are my beautiful co-hosts. Hola, mi gente, aquí con la Margarita. I am your author, writer, artist, your spiritual and creative healing life coach. I am your end of life doula. I am many things. and I am magical. And I am la Margarita. Bienvenida a Gusta Tu Corona. <laughs> I am Francia Elena Rodriguez Reina, and I go by fur. I am the CEO, creator of Fur Marketing. Uh, I help entrepreneurs, business owners with their social media content and digital services. I am a realtor here in Florida, Central Florida to be exact, and Connecticut. And I am the co-host of this amazing platform, Ajusta the Corona. I love it. You are a, a realtor in Central Florida and Southern Connecticut. Yes. Love it. Awesome, awesome. You just have a pot full of awesomeness on this live tonight. So we are going to continue our conversation, our topic on narcissists. This is part two. We did part one a few weeks back and we wanted to wait till we were all together again because we've been doing much traveling to start the topic all over again. So I'm just going to briefly discuss what we've already spoken about at the other, I'm sorry, on the previous session. And it was all about narcissists. So we talked about nine signs of um, narcissism. It's a symptoms, they're symptoms, they're called core features. Um, of people with narcissistic personality. And one of the things we talked about was grandiosity, where they think that their, their sense of self-importance is just immense. Like they're, they think that they're royalty, um, feeling superior to others, and that one deserves special treatment. Feelings are often accompanied by fantasies of unlimited success and brilliance. They can tell some very, very, very good stories. Um, another one we talked about is excessive need for admiration. They're usually, they often monopolize conversations. They need to be the center of conversations. Um, it's all about them or nothing. If, if you start to talk about yourself, they'll quickly get bored and just excuse themselves because the conversation is all about them. Um, the other one is superficial and exploit, exploitative relationships and how their relationships are based on surface attributes. Um, all about materialistic things. You know, what, what can you give me? What can you do for me? You know, I am the center of this relationship. And then in, in the last conversation, we talked about entitlement. And when we got to entitlement, we tend to use that word a lot nowadays with our children, like our children feel entitled. So I had questioned, um, are we creating narcissistic people? Are we creating narcissistic kids? And the conversation lasted the whole rest of the show where a lot of people did feel that we were raising narcissistic kids due to social media, um, how they everything was about the likes and you know how much attention they could get, how many followers they could get. And that is how the children are basing their life 
nowadays. So that took the most of our conversation. So we never actually got to finish the nine signs of narcissism. So today we're going to continue it for all of you. Um, lack of empathy also was a huge one. Um, severely limited or totally lacking of any sympathy whatsoever or what other people are feeling or having any kind of emotion where, you know, they feel for you or they understand your pain. It's all about them and saying, oh, well, your problem, not mine. So what kind of, where, where can we change? Where, what, what, not where can we change? What can we change to bring our children back down to earth to teach them um, how to have empathy? How, how to care more and how, like, I, sometimes I feel that they're so desensitized, they really don't care about anything. So that is my personal opinion. If you are on, we would love for you to say hello, give your comments, um, and let's carry on this conversation. Hello, Brenda. Welcome. Hola, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. I, I don't know how to do that. That is a very good question. And when you ask it broadly to different people, everybody's going to have a different response. Like, how can you at whatever stage? Because narcissist is it's like a germ. And it spreads and then it, it like controls where we at. How do you make your child realize that being vain and shallow is not what living is about? It's not the purpose of life. Um, right. I, I mean, coming back from my humble country, um, I must say that exposing them to, to that humbleness, to that humanity, to that, to, where people do not have it the way they have it. I think that's a, that's a very, uh, a good way to do it. Not, you know, because here is, is all oh, we take things away and the, you know, things like that. It, it's hard to take it away, right? It's, it's, it's with us every day, all day, the social media, the electronics, you know, everything's uh, yeah, the fast food, the, Everything's given to us pretty much. Um, it's instant gratification everywhere you go look around. Um, so me bringing my boys to where I'm from, um, that wasn't the purpose, but they, they saw. They saw how good we have it, how blessed we are, how lucky we are, how we already have won the lottery uh, by just being in this country and um and don't get me wrong people were lovely uh it wasn't like homeless everywhere it was hard working people that wake up every day on a motorcycle you know to go do what they have to do you know bring food to their homes and and again iphone was a wow you know to to some people that we were around and um so again, um, I think that's one good way to kind of explore um, and have your kid explore, uh, no matter what age they are. Of course, the younger, the better. I've seen families who have sold everything they own and have taken not one, but two kids, toddlers and infants to travel the world so they can explore culture, so they can explore that humbleness and you know get off that cloud that's true that is so real too but will people go to that length but it's true but you can take a week or two and go to visit a third world country where sneakers ain't the thing and and it's you know where our kids think they got it all together but they don't know a thing until they have to go to morocco and really figure out what street hustling is about just to get a plate of food right but yeah, that's one option. Really? That's one, but, yeah. And, and narcissists, just to back it up a little bit, is not only about the children. There are so many adults that are narcissists. Um, we are just giving examples of what we feel may work um, 
on so giving race our one. children our, a reality check, like let them, like, and, and what Francia said is a perfect example. And, and Margarita, let, let's take our children on a trip and let's take them to a third world country where they will learn a different type of culture. Um, unfortunately, not everyone is able to do that. But one of the things that, that they should do is, is volunteer have them volunteer at a soup kitchen, have them volunteer like, you know, where where kids are not as fortunate, where where like you said, like having a pair of sneakers is probably the richest thing that they'll ever get to. Right. Um, so those are just things that we're sharing. Um, welcome, Richard. Hi, Richard. Glad to have you here. Um, so after lack of empathy, the next thing was identity disturbance. Um, the sense of self is highly superficial, extremely rigid, and often fragile. So they feel so above everyone else that, believe it or not, their, their, their ego is super fragile Anything you say to them can push them over the edge. Um, but you have to recognize first that you are dealing with a narcissist. Otherwise, the narcissist gets into your head and you're like thinking you're the bad person. You think that, you know, that everything that they're saying to to belittle you or everything that they're saying to make themselves feel important is, is, is turning the situation around and making you feel like you're not good enough or you're less than. So you first have to acknowledge that you are dealing with a narcissist before you are able to know how to protect yourself and how to respond to them. Their self-stability depends on maintaining the view that one is exceptional. That's my favorite word, exceptional. You are all exceptional. Yeah. Um, grandiose sense of self is easily threatened. And patients retreat from or deny realities that challenge grandiosity. So you can't tell me I am not the best of the best. You cannot tell me that I am not the queen of England because they refuse to believe it. Once it's in their head that they are above and beyond everything, it is very hard to bring them down from that altar. Richard says, many children today do not have a spiritual foundation. Building a sense of being through a higher power is helpful because that is the major law of right and wrong. Too many atheists exist. And that Absolutely. is also very true. Absolutely. And that's, you know, and people, and narcissists began alongside with atheists because sometimes they're one and the same. Um, when they took the prayers out of school, my parents stopped also like you know i think a lot of parents would put a lot of the upbringing the raising on the teachers at the schools so then when the kids came home it's like, oh well what are you doing yeah. today what thing you teach you so i think richard that has a lot to do with it because there's no base and then so what how do they fill that gap by believing they're their own god not their own you know okay i'm i'm powerful i'm strong I'm a warrior, but like you're actually above everyone else. So I think that's true. A lot of that, a lot of that is true. And children, to me, it's not, I think it's from age 13 and up. When you hit that puberty and you feel lost and you don't know which way to go. And that's like the most pivotal time where you take someone and you mold them and you guide them. Mm -hmm. and a lot of us, a lot of us. As parents, we're so busy and then they're so moody and hormonal because we're going through that change that there's really no, you know, coge pa'ca, this is your name, stay over here. Look, search this, search that, so yeah. It's, it's so hard, it's so hard. Um, you, you hit the point of identity 
Um, and what you just said, Margarita, as well, was um, that pivotal time and age where you we're trained, we're we're teaching them and training them and trying to do our best as parents to guide them uh, with the time that we have because we have to balance everything else on our shoulders. And then you have this sex identity crisis as well. Then you have, you know, the, the like you said, no type of base of belief uh, of high, you know, a higher power. Um, so then our kids are just like all over the place, confused. And, you know, and, and that is something that, um, that starts at home. But because me personally, I didn't grow up with a set religion. You know, it was hard um, to, to, to guide my kids to a certain religion. And, um, and I didn't want to. I didn't want them to feel... Uh, just secluded to just one. And um, I just told them to believe in God and what God meant to me and what does God mean to them, but know that there is a higher power and creator out there um, so they can, you know, stay grounded. Richard went on to say that followers on social media are their disciples. Yeah. That's why narcissists open themselves because of the need of external validation. Kids need to understand a job performed is success. Absolutely. Uh, I'm so in love with you, Richard. Really? Yeah, in love absolutely. That's why um, I'm sorry, Lillian, but that's right. Religion is me and me. It is about believing. Um, I learned about God, even though I was going to Catholic school, when I would say, Papi, why do I have to say bendición? You know, like, and he's like, tú estás pidiendo bendición. And that's, eso cuando nosotros te decimos, Dios te bendiga, but God bless you. So we're like asking for the blessing. So it was always talk about God, not about Catholicism, Christianity, um, Jehovah's Witness. It, it wasn't all, none about, it was always about God. And I think that's parents, we, that's what we need to do. And then they can filter off to a religion, but the base is God, so that's good. But Richard's right. Social media is poisoning our kids. Shit, I gotta get off TikTok sometimes because I be feeling dizzy, like I'm falling into somebody's web sometimes because it's like all like on and on and on. So yeah, and for a child, imagine the grip, the feeling to to belong in a group, and that social media is there. It's the devil, as we're on it. Dale, Lillian, I'm sorry. A, a lot it's, of questions. No, it's quite all right. That's what this is about. It is an open discussion for people to voice their opinions. And, and, and I totally agree with you. Um, oh, and he goes, and a lot of adults too, because Margarita, you stated <laughs> that it was pulling you in as well. Yeah. And that's true. Um, I don't have TikTok, but I do see the amount of teenagers that have become stars and influencers from TikTok and are getting paid so much money from it. So um, I've read articles about them, not because I've actually seen them on TikTok, because a lot of these people, I didn't know who they were. Um, and another thing is like even for businesses, we have been told, and Francia, you can tell me if this is true or not, that you your business needs to be advertising on TikTok in order to be successful today. And <laughs> so you're saying that us that are not on TikTok don't have a chance. <laughs> no, it's, it, you know what it is? It, it's in with the new, right? It's it, it evolving. That's where you get the most traction and traffic. I mean, TV was a thing, right? Radio was a thing. Now is, you know, newspapers. Who pays for newspaper ads nowadays? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it's it's just moving with the trends. And the trend right now is just everything is at our fingertip. All these platforms. And they come up with new ones every day. Like, I, I lost track. Um, and it's, no, you're a business person. You're an entrepreneur. You... You do what you do, and you do. You try to utilize all these platforms, but you're not going to miss anything by not being, you know, on mm -hmm. in front of these kids, you know, on their TikTok. You know, you find your own niche, you find your own um, 
you know, uh, avenues. Um, and you go from there. And it's mm -hmm. millions, millions of people yeah. um, out there. Like LinkedIn. Yeah. And that's another thing. And, and go back. Let me tell you something. A lot of narcissists are, are formed because they, they, there's no avenue for them to go. And I think the biggest mistake we as a nation, as a nation did, was slowly begin the demise of the newspaper. The newspaper since forever has been written at a fifth grade level so that everybody can read it and understand it and be informed. Then they had the crossword puzzle that got your, your brain muscles going, especially on Sundays. You just had to beat the next person playing it. So your brain muscles were always in use. You were learning, you were enhancing your vocabulary. You know, you were reading the comics. So that for, for that part of the, the beginning of your week and that Sunday, you know, those comics played with you throughout the day, throughout the week, because, you know, especially if you love those part of the comics, you read the obituary. So you, you would learn to value life a little more that week. The newspaper was is played a pivotal role in every section. And then, so what do we have? Like, I'm tangible. I need to read. I need to feel what I'm reading. Smell what I'm reading. I like to read. And Sunday, that was it. You get the paper. You read it. Oh, my God. Mira, fulana. And, I mean, and it was something that always had your brain functioning and working for you, not against you, because you were absorbing stuff. You were, you were adding to your vocabulary. You were adding to your essence, you know life you appreciating life more because of all the people in the obituary and you saw who was hiring so you would help me that they're hiring here for those who you know didn't read the paper that and was our facebook so what happened though, that was our that was our social media back then that, and that should it, it should have never left because it's taken away from a lot even the kids who you would leave it on the table they would sit there and if they were toying on whatever on the, the 25 foot court phone they were playing reading with the paper and then that was just like totally eliminated. So a, a big part of our childhood, our, our wealth and knowledge was taken away because of this. Who wants to do fingertip? I still handwrite a whole book on paper. And that's what I've been doing, so writing my, finishing up my other book on paper. Before I even type one, one letter, one tableta on the computer. So maybe it's just me and being nostalgic, but I think newspapers need to be brought back for that purpose because then kids will have something. It's not all about, oh my God, look, let's go over here, there's glitter. And that's narcissists. They want everything that shines. And what, what happens when you're always near glitter and mirrors, right? There's always a reflection so you can hide who you are behind all that. Yeah, I mean, again, um, I agree in a lot of what you're saying. Um, but again, I, I I believe in evolving. <laughs> what happened? What he said? Richard, because it's so funny. He said exactly what was on the tip of my tongue. When we were young, our parents used to buy the vocero, the Spanish paper, and they used to have las siete semejanzas. You have to find the seven things that were similar. Yes. So she's talking about the newspaper, and I'm thinking, I remember finding the siete semejanzas, and Richard wrote it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that's a memory that he's rich, he's so wealthy because he has those memories, and mm -hmm. it made your brain work. So you were absolutely, and you were sharp. The sensitivity today comes in because they're lazy and their brain muscles are lazy. There's no, there's no sharpness. There's no, okay, let me figure this out. There's none of that going on. Definitely. No, yeah. So, so then they got to be fake. And then a narcissist is slowly being born. <laughs> Difficulty with attachment and dependency. That's exactly what we're talking about. They rely on feedback from the environment, the likes, the hearts, follow me. Um, relationships only exist to shore up positive self-image. Um, yeah, I'm only dating you because, you know, you may have some money. You may know someone that I want to get to know. It's what can I get from this? That is constantly the narcissist. Interactions are superficial and intimacy is avoided. Our Janice Torres, hello and welcome to Hola. Um, We are discussing narcissists this evening. 
So intimacy is avoided. Um, I did not know that about narcissists. Why is intimacy avoided? Explain that to me, Margarita. Well, because it, it, with intimacy comes vulnerability. And in mm. that moment of intimacy, and, and, and you're finally being fed something that your body and, and your, your spirit has been starving and dehydrated for, guess what happens? You become loose when you start, your true colors come out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like um, on the yellow brick road when Toto pulls the curtain. You can't pull that curtain. You can't know who's the man behind the curtain. And mm -hmm. that's the intimacy. We do become, we let our guard down, you know? feel so good and everything in it. and you expose yourself during intimacy so that's something that they have to be like this way you know correct so, I, I want people and Decky. exactly <laughs> see I, I, I believe a narcissist uh is full of themselves right we said that and their ego is right they only feed their ego and ego is in insecurities it's not mm -hmm. confidence it's insecurity so what happens when you are intimate right they're they they know they're insecure they know they're lacking something they're no so they're not gonna give their 100 percent selves to anyone because they're afraid to show those insecurities they're afraid to like, like margarita said expose them you know have to explain anything um lying liars right they love to lie narcissists are liars they have to remember lies so the closer they get to someone what's going to happen the truth like you said they're going to expose the truth so they're they they have to hide behind something they have to be you know over here i mean perfect example i'm you know not to bring them up but you know the ex-president you know, the biggest person, you know, he, I think they slept in different uh, bedrooms, him and his wife, you know, they, everything about him was ego and insecurity and he screamed, I'm the best. Right. So yeah, you, you have them everywhere. They are everywhere. And then the thing is, um, thanks for platforms like this, that people are becoming aware because a lot of people don't know. Not only do they not know how to put a name to the behavior of the people that they're with, but they didn't really know. They knew something was wrong, but they couldn't identify what it was. Steps. So right. now, now we have platforms such as this that are continuously talking about it because you know what? These conversations never get old and somebody missed it or they heard it on their own, but they couldn't quite get it. Then they come back on and we're, we're touching base with it again because you know what? It's about saving Saving souls. These platforms is about feeding the spirit so that they could know how to starve someone else's ego so that they can protect their aura, their Correct. energy. Mm -hmm. and so, um, hi, Michelle. So, mm -hmm. and, and when it comes to intimacy, um, Richard stated in, in that a lot of narcissists hold um, intimacy hostage and use it as a reward once something is given to them. And that, that that's deep. Um, Michelle, welcome to conversations with a host at the Corona. And then they said they love bomb in the beginning to break down walls and then withhold it once their target is ensnared. Uh, you sound like you have experience with a narcissist. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think at one point in our lives, I think we, we all did. And I think that that's why we can talk about this stuff so passionately. And my experience is not going to be the same as Francia's or Lillian's and, and vice versa, but we have experienced it at some mm -hmm. form and at some mm -hmm. level. And I think what better teachers than those that can actually admit that we were ensnared into someone's web of deceit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With that fly that survived in the spider's web, right? So here we are talking about it, yes. This next one is very, near to my heart only because I feel that I know someone that is actually going through this right now. So chronic feelings of emptiness and boredom. Um, when attention and praise are not available, patients feel empty, bored, depressed, or restless. 
And I am actually going through that right now with someone that I know. Um, I can't seem to get him to focus on anything, but these are emotions that are he is feeling. So can these also, so these emotions I have believed to be signs of depression or bipolar or anxiety, but now I see that they can also be signs of narcissist, narcissistic behavior, which narcissistic is a mental issue. It is um, part of a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vulnerable. I'm it sorry. is an illness with no with no medicinal, right? There's no medicinal thing that can help. I think an illness, yeah, it's a spiritual illness. Um, it's a it's a chemical breakdown of the brain. I still think people want to put labels. It's, ve it's very them. hard to be treated. Um, they say it can be treated with different types of psychoanalysis and different types of treatments. And then they want to medicate with antidepressants. NPD is the term narcissistic personality disorder. Correct. And there is, they say that there is treatment for it, but it is very hard. And, and in my mentality, if you have it, it's... Okay. You want to have it. You yeah, want to feel that way. You want to feel grand, grandiosity. Yeah. You know what? The Western medicine, they, they want to put a medical term on everything. And they want to, what, what do you do with antidepressants? You mellow out. And as soon as it run, it comes out, you got to pop another pill. And all it does is keep you sleepy and unaware of what you're, you're not fixing. You're not solving you're not repenting and surrendering and, and asking for help and and what is it the mind shift that that changing your thought process you know mm -hmm. shifting mm -hmm. and, and if you don't do that there's no pill there's no magical pill on anything and i'm i'm speaking this way because i'm not medicinal at all at all so i don't believe in popping a pill for everything that's wrong especially when it is a spiritual and a mental thing like my mom would have dementia. I kept the music playing. I did that. It wasn't even, he took one pill at night and it was like five grams. Why? Because I think if you keep the mind busy and you feed it, but then that's me and I'm not a medicinal person. So I'm against all these pills for all these Western labels to keep you, you know, under the okie doke. Hello, Lily. Welcome to Conversations with Ajusta Tu Corona. Remember, narcissists don't know that they're narcissistic. They think what they do and affect people is natural. That's what I'm saying. They, they, they like being that way. They like feeling them. Cool. They like feeling like they're the center of attention. And, and, and I'm laughing because that's where our parents would say, "Mira, cuidado que te tumbo de ese caballo." And that's what's not happening. They don't know they're narcissists because nobody's directing them. Nobody's recording them and saying, look at your behavior. That's what we got to do. We shine the light on what's the, where the problem is. Don't suffocate it by, by making you all go busy with antidepressants or something. Yeah. Narcissists don't know when narcissists need to be made aware of their behavior. Like all of us do. When we're acting a certain kind of way at work and we're not narcissists, when we're caught in that office, we're made aware of the behavior that's not tolerable, right? And we're like, oh, well, you know, I was going through something. And guess what? The next time we're going through something, we're going to check ourselves with somebody, before somebody else checks ourselves, right? So narcissism needs to be repeated, in, in my opinion, and made aware of what the hell they're doing. Yeah. I, I, the thing is that it's like Richard says, they do not think that they are doing anything wrong. So even if we bring it to their attention because they are grandiosos, they don't think anything of it. Um, no, Lily, you met my narcissist. I lived with one for seven years. Sorrel, I'll blow him out on this page. I don't care. The biggest narcissist ever in my life. You met him, you know it. So and he still like, thinks that he's doing nothing wrong. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so... But I don't 
believe that medicine will help that. that that's one thing I'm saying. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's why I said they said it's very, very hard to um to cure or to remove people of that being. Vulnerability to life transitions. And once again, this is another one where I mistook it for a sign of depression and it could really be narcissistic behavior. Difficulty maintaining reality-based personal and professional goals over time. I'm gonna be this, go to school for this, and then a year later, I don't want anything to do with that. I'm going to work this job. I'm going to do this and nothing comes of it. So it's difficulty maintaining reality-based professions or jobs um, or goals. Compromises required by school, jobs, and relationships may, fuel, may feel unbearable. So all the dating is making them feel unbearable. All the responsibilities with jobs is making them feel unbearable. School is unbearable. At this point, they need a good smack in the ass. <laughs> Hello. So, so narcissists are, 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 are complainers. They're, they're complainers saying. and they're overwhelmed by everything. They're overwhelmed like the, they're overwhelmed by the requirements of schools of jobs, of relationships. Rules. They want to go, they, rules, correct. They don't want to have any of that. So they are overwhelmed by all of that. Richard says, another problem is that society is elevating mental illness in a positive light. Society pushes degenerate and degenerative behavior as a way to normalize it. I vote to bring back insane asylum. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I mean, so charged. Many don't have clothes, and clothes well, because they were mismanaged and they didn't know how to treat the human behavior. Richard, I'm so with you. Instead of poisoning them with all these narcotics, yes, have maybe we can change the name, Richard, because asylum does <laughs> bring back red rum, red rum. <laughs> so. But I think those places where it's talk therapy, it's 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 a, a guided process of relearned behavior. I'm all for that. I'll work on one. Nobody watched them. It's true. Nobody really watched them, and 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 that for me is is like come, it comes from experience. They were put in a large room and they were over medicated in asylum. So that's where the narcotic um, ep epidemic began in the asylum. Yes, yes, and 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 I'm like front and center in that because I lived that. Like you know, my mom when I was born, she was in an asylum for six months. Um, because back then they didn't know what postpartum depression was. So they ended up putting her in an asylum for six months and she came out of there more messed up. I don't know if it was the medication or what she saw, um, which did damage to her. So, you know, I, I was too young, but I, you know, she's told me stories. So yeah, when my, my older sister wanted to flee back to Colombia when she was 16, that's what my aunt wanted to do, just bring her to the hospital, to the psychiatric, um, you know, um, um, unit and medicate her. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with her. She just doesn't want to be here. Like, you know, mm -hmm. but that it's, it's, it's a thin line. It's a very thin line. Um, when it comes to medication, over medication, I I was I watched my mom over medicate. Uh, with, well, yeah, I'm against it. I'm against it since I was a child, and mm -hmm. you know, for years it takes me to be in a lot of pain to take a Tylenol. Same here. So what Same about here. You? When when all of that happened to our grandparents and our parents, well, us, our parents, our children's grandparents, then we saw what happened. How they didn't know how to handle the situation that looking back now was nothing as difficult as it is today, right? It was just a lack of knowledge. Shit, rents were like, what, uh, $172? I remember I found receipts in my mother's stuff. So what happens? So then we, I, my, my child's not going to be raised like that. 
So then this generation changes. We're not going to impose Spanish language. We're not going to impose religion. We're not going to do, we're not going to force us like our parents made us go to church four times a week. You know, so what happens as we de-escalate the upbringing and then it turns into nothing. It turns into these, these 13 year old getting, you know, checks every month from YouTube because they have a camera on them and they're not even talking to the people like we are. They're just playing video games and they're like 4.7 K subscribers and all these viewers. And, but what are, what are they doing? What's the teaching and all of that? As you mentioned earlier, Lillian, with the video. So I think we got to get back to the basics. It's like I said that on the last one, if we go back to the basics, we can simplify life by elevating respect and self-love. Yes, definitely. Well, the last one that has to do with the youth is that the youth, it says young adults may have a hard time launching. And that is exactly what is happening to so many of our kids nowadays. They, we, we have been such great providers as you said, de-escalating everything. We have been such great providers for them that when the time comes for them to go to college and when the time comes for them to go get a job, they can't handle it. They can't handle reality. And and, and that's what um, you, you said, great providers. Correct. So if, if we were to change that, word right or those words to we overly provided right Absolutely. because what happened to us we had to learn you know early on to do things to work ethic you know to earn to do things you know some hard the hard way and some because that's what our parents taught us but that's where I personally um, failed to do for my boys in a sense, you know, it was that, you know, no, go the chores, the, the simple chores of every day that those are skills. Those are, you know, motor skills that we, that I took from my kids because I'm constantly catering to them. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then that leads to, the not yeah the lazy <laughs> i'm just gonna be the, entitlement. the lazy the entitlement. Entitlement. yes josh is going into ninth grade next monday and this monday and it's some the common sense and just the small little things you know that i have to now get upset about because i failed to do so you know as he was growing up now he's 14 15 years old and i have to usa and train usa and train because it's never too late but it shouldn't gotten to this point it's a little hard, but you got a plan you see it's it's not like you're complaining you're voicing out concerns with the solution in place and that's that's what how we have to do it and richard's right we don't want we're as adults we don't want nobody hovering around us so a child who's already hormonal, who still feels lost, doesn't know where Anxiety. You know, mm -hmm. That's the last thing a parent can do is hover because then they get angry. And then all that frustration or that displacement that they're feeling gets taken towards the parent. So the parent's always the wrong one. It's your mm -hmm. fault. And then guess what happens? Yeah, Marissa I, Marissa, I believe in tough love. My kids, they'll tell you I beat their ass all the time, but we have the best relationship now. And now they know whatever choice they make, it's their fault because you're taught what's right, what's wrong, and what's a maybe because we always teeter totter on them. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Should I do it? Should I not do it? So tough love it is. And we mm -hmm. that's how we raised them, right, Lil? Tough Absolutely. love. Absolutely. I have no regrets. Yeah. And we still complain about it today, but they're great adults now. So they're great, they're strong, they know how to get themselves mm -hmm. out of situations. They're not name blaming they tell us oh i remember when you did this i'm like that's right because you did that boom so that's a conversation now now we're mm -hmm. all adults and there's a conversation and that helps them raise their kids you know i didn't re i didn't think about it and i just thought you were mean for punishing us for taking away this or for hitting us but now that i'm here 
thank you. Because it wasn't Absolutely. love, love isn't always hitting, but it's not yeah. always just talking because you know what? That's what created, you know, bomb makers in their bedrooms. You gotta, you gotta let them know. Yeah. And, and, and anybody can say to me, I don't regret yeah. how I raised my kids, but it's about a give and take. So when it is brought up later on, well, you did this. Well, let's think about it. Why did I do this? What were you doing that made me do that? And then that's how also you get their muscles flowing, you know? It's like the joke I say when somebody can't say my name, Margarita, and I say, roll the R's. It's good tongue exercise. But we need to re retrain our children at, at whatever age to utilize the muscles in their brain so that they're always thinking as they're, com as they're voicing out problems. Correct. But the solution is also right there. It's like it goes hand in hand. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. them with expectations and consequences. You do this, this is what's going to happen. Correct. It, it's a difficult situation. And, and, and as you said, it's never too late. But sometimes, I don't know, it's, it's a lot harder to train a, a 14, 15, 16 year old than it is to train a, a, a four and five year old. Correct. And same thing. It's and, like, let's, let's train and raise good men because once they're men, that's it. You know, it's harder then, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. now you have grown men disrespecting women, disrespecting relationships, walking around a well, narcissist. As parents, that's our biggest mess up. El ay bendito. Ay bendito, déjalo, déjalo, déjalo. And you think you're, you're earning brownie points that's you're failing as a parent because you are raising someone who's not going to learn right mm -hmm. so expectations and consequences at this age Lily and you're absolutely right when they're 14 16 ya tienen pelito no huevo y se creen Exacto. Right? so what do you do you can't tell them anything so let them fall on their face don't do that why just don't don't do that because it's going to lead to this whatever they do it let them fall let them clean themselves up and let them rise back on their own. Because guess what? When they have to clean up their mess, they think about it twice. Correct. And if they do it again, because, you know, twice, two times is always the charm for me, then guess what happens? They, it's going to take them a little longer because they're still shocked that you're not running in as Captain save a -Hole anymore. save them. So there's, you know, for different ages, there's different stages of training them. Okay, what is Richard saying, Lillian? He said, whoa, Francia, what about women who are openly hypergamous? And remember divorce rates, 70 to 80% are filed no-fault divorces by women. And then- Thank you, Richard. This is why you need to be on the show too, to, to bring the men's perspective. And Maritza right. says, she doesn't like the word train. How about having conversations about life and let me fall? If let me fall if they feel they know it all. And then, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. I mean, when I when I say train, um, of course, you know, we potty train, right? We 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 train our kids to to learn the, those motor skills and those life skills. Um, but you're right. It's it's conversations and is uh, setting examples, leading by example. Leading by example, correct. Mm -hmm. And Richard goes, we'll never get through all the steps. The steps are good. <laughs> How was the bad? I have to, I need to go back and watch the battle of the sexes with Richard. Oh, that was phenomenal. He won. It was really good. He oh, won. I, I, so I got to go back and watch it. And let me tell you something. And, and I love him. I just, you know, thank you, Richard. Thank you for always taking the time to support your mom and us crazies. And in our conversations through through lessons through experience lessons through trainings that we've taken that we're passing on and just through life because he look at i won stop bragging don't be braggadocious it's not pretty yeah <laughs> he did win um we're gonna end this with i'm just gonna go quickly through how is narcissism diagnosed so narcissism is diagnosed if you have any of the five following symptoms. All right, hold your hands up. A grandiose sense of self-importance. 
Preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Belief that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. Requires excessive admiration. That's number four. Has a sense of entitlement. Is interpersonally exploitative. Takes advantage of others. Ooh, I know so many people that do that one. Lacks empathy. Envies others or believes others are envious of him or her. Shows arrogant, haughty behaviors and attitudes. Anybody that, fall, that has five out of those nine things I just listed are diagnosed with narcissism behavior or narcissism personality. So we have to come to a hard stop right now because if you have the time, follow Margarita at Viva Cafe Con Leche tonight who is having a special 8 p.m. show. So remember, you are beautiful, you are amazing, you are love, you are exceptional, and never, ever, ever forget to adjust that crown and keep it moving. Oof, that's right. Poderosa. Yes, mi gente. Thank you, Lillian, for that. Viva Café con Leche at 8 o'clock with, with a special guest. Um, and remember, breathe in the beauty and breathe out the bullshit. Namaste, mi gente. See you next Thank Thursday. Thank you so much, guys. Ajusta, ajusta esa corona. Thank you Good so night, much, guys. And thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, be intentional. Take care.